Hello and welcome to part 5 of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of National Electrical Code, which is a subsection of codes and standards. This lecture is dedicated to motors and in this lecture we are going to learn about code requirements for motors. Where can we find details about motors in NEC? Article 430 is dedicated to motors, motor circuits and controllers. It is one of the biggest articles in the code with 14 parts. And that's because motors are the workhorses of industry, especially induction motors, and there are so many requirements in the code that we need to comply with. I would recommend you to go through Article 430 at least once, because although it's a big article, but it relates to motors, as I mentioned, they are a very critical component of our power distribution system. So it's a good idea to go through Article 430 at least once. Uh, we'll start with part one. And we'll go through all the parts essentially, but I will point out some of the more important sections that you can make note of and look at in a little bit more detail. So part one is titled general. It contains general code requirements for motors. And within part one on the very first page, we actually have figure 430.1, which provides a very good visual representation of article 430 content. So it's basically a diagram showing the motor feeder, uh, short circuit and uh, ground fault protection, motor disconnect means and so on so forth and it cross references to other article uh, it cross references to other sections within the article so it's a very very good visual representation and provides a very good overview part 2 of article 430 is titled motor circuit conductors motors are unique in the sense that they are almost completely inductive in nature with very low resistance so they it results in a very high inrush current typically 6 to 8 times their full load current. I would like to draw your attention to two sections of this part 430.22 and 430.24. 430.22 deals with single motor and the gist of it is basically that if you have a motor for continuous application then the conductor should not be sized less than 125 percent of motor FLC. Now motor FLC, motor full load current is very important and I will actually come back to it several times within this lecture. So whenever you're dealing with a single motor, you have to size the conductor as 125% of the motor FLC. Now what about if you have a, a case where you're dealing with several motors or a combination of motor and other loads. So if you are dealing with several motors, then you will apply 125% of the largest, okay, 125% uh, of the FLC of the largest motor. So the conductor has to be sized at least this much plus the FLCs of remaining motors. Okay. Now, what if you don't have motors, uh, but you have a combination of motor and some other loads, then uh, you'll still do the 125% of the largest uh, motor FLCs of the remaining motors. And if you have other loads in addition to motors, or if you just have one motor, then 125% of the motor plus for non-continuous loads, it will be 100% of their load uh, rating and for continuous loads, it will be 125%, okay? So this is how we are going to size the conductors. It's very important and it is something that as a power systems engineer you will encounter quite often. So make sure that you understand these requirements. Part three of article 430 is titled motor and branch circuit overload protection. I would like to draw your attention to two sections, 430.32 which deals with continuous duty motors and 430.33 which deals with intermittent duty. Most of the times we are dealing with continuous duty motor applications so please pay special attention to it. I would recommend you to go through the entire part 3 while uh, giving special attention to 430.32 and 430.33 is very brief uh, so it will be a quick read. Part 4 of article 430 is titled motor branch circuit short circuit and ground fault protection basically over current protection okay and the most important content in my opinion within part 4 is this table 430.52 which provides the maximum rating or setting of motor branch circuit short circuit and ground fault protective devices now by using this table we are able to come up uh, we are able to basically see whether our scenario falls under or the what type of motor we are dealing with we are dealing with a single phase motor we are dealing with a uh, multi-phase motor, a squirrel cage motor, a synchronous motor, wound rotor motor, so on and so forth, and the type of the protection that we're using. 
are we using non-time delay fuses, uh, time delay fuses, instantaneous trip breaker, or inverse time breaker. And when you basically select the scenario that is applicable to you, this table will tell you what is the maximum rating of the overcurrent uh, protection that you can use. Now remember, part three is dealing with overload conditions and part four is dealing with overcurrent uh, situations, which basically includes your um, a short circuit and ground fault. Part 5 of article 430 is titled Motor Feeder Short Circuit and Ground Fault Protection. The section I would like you to go through in detail is 430.62 which is rating or setting of a motor load and it actually cross references 430.52 and I assume that you have already gone through part 4 and specifically uh, 430.52 in detail. I am going to go through a couple of examples on the topic of motor bond circuit short circuit and ground fault protection as well as motor feeder short circuit and ground fault protection in order to explain how we go about sizing the OCPDs uh, for both feeder and bronze circuits. For the remaining parts I would recommend you to actually go through them at least once as I mentioned you should go through article 430 at least once but parts 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are more specific to motors and for the remaining ones as you can see over here part 6 is dealing with uh, motor control circuit, 7 is dealing with motor controllers, 8 is dealing with MCCs, 9 is dealing with disconnecting means, variable speed drives, motors over 1000 volts, protection of life parts of the motors for all voltages and grounding of motors. So these are good sections to go through at least once uh, but the first five are very important but because they are focused on motors. As I mentioned earlier, motor FLC shows up again and again. That's because the code requires us to make use of FLC for motor conductor capacity, for conductor sizing basically, for branch circuit and feeder circuit overcurrent protection, for overload protection, for disconnect switch ampere ratings and so on and so forth. So the question is, where do you get this data? Where do you find the motor full load current? So far we've discussed the first 14 parts of article 430, actually first five parts in relative detail and I just mentioned the remaining seven parts for you to actually go through at least once. Uh, they're not directly related to motors but they are indirectly related and still a worthwhile read. But the last part which I didn't mention is actually part 4 and this is arguably one of the most important sections of article 430 because it contains details regarding FLCs of the motors and as we've seen over here without FLCs you cannot size the conductor, you cannot size OCPDs for bond circuits, for feeder overcurrent protection, for disconnect switches and so on. So Part 4 contains these tables that I've listed over here and they are very important starting with table 430.247 which deals with FLC for DC motors, um, 430.248 deals with single phase AC motors, 430.249 deals with two phase AC motors and probably the most important one is 430.250 which deals with three phase AC motors which are quite commonly used. Now there are some unique cases when we don't use the FLCs from these tables but we actually make use of the nameplate full load amps that are provided for the motor and uh, those cases essentially include motors uh, which have lower RPMs, uh, more specifically RPMs less than 1200 and uh, high torque motors and multi-speed motors but for all practical cases your FLC is going to be coming from part 4 which is tables and from one of these tables depending on the application depending on the type of the motor that you're using.